In this video, we're gonna show you how you can change the engine oil and filter on your 2003 GMC Sierra 3500. This is gonna be a very similar process for all of your vehicles equipped with a 5.3 to a 6.0, even a 4.8 V8. And the filter that we use is a PF46 AC Delco. I say it's really important that you use this filter because if you don't, you're not gonna be able to get the filter on properly and taking it off is gonna be really hard. There's not a lot of clearance between where the filter bolts onto or screws onto and the oil pan housing itself. That's why these filters are a little bit tighter than most filters that you would get aftermarket that say they can fit. To do this job, you'll wanna have a 15 millimeter socket and ratchet. You can use a wrench if you want. And you're gonna to wanna to have an oil filter wrench so that you can go ahead and remove that filter from the oil pan area. Besides that, have your drain pan. You don't actually need to raise the vehicle. You can slide in right underneath from behind the driver's side front tire. One thing that I always like to check when I'm doing an oil change before I drain the oil is how much oil was on it. And how you want to read the dipstick is you want to go ahead, wipe the dipstick clean, put the dipstick back in, pull it back out, and then you'll go ahead and read. So right now, we see that there is no oil on this dipstick, which means that there's no oil inside the drain pan. There's no oil inside the oil pan. All right, so we're underneath the vehicle on the driver's side, just behind the driver's side tire, and we are going to crack loose the oil drain pan plug. And what you'll notice here is that there's this big crossover tube that takes the driver's side exhaust manifold over to the passenger, and they meet at the collector. That's going to get a little bit of oil on it. Don't be afraid of that. So it's lefty-loosey, righty-tighty. Someone put this on with the force of a god. Yeah, so that, that's a over-tightened drain plug right there. So go ahead, get a crack loose, and then pull it out. <coughs> Alrighty, we'll just let that drain out. Now while the oil drain pan plug is out, we're gonna go ahead and remove the oil filter. To do that, we'll just grab our wrench, we'll come in here and it's a very tight angle between the K member and the oil pan. There's not a lot to grip, so you're gonna be making really little turns. You will really hate your life if somebody over tightens one of these oil filters. And it's really best to use an AC Delco because it's just a small enough filter for you to get your tool in here and to back it out. So once you get your oil filter cranked out just a little bit, you'll very easily be able to grab it by your hands and spin it all the way out. We'll just let that drip down a little bit so we don't make a big mess on this nice parking lot. So once the filter's drained down a little bit, there's still gonna be a bunch of oil in it, but at least you're not gonna make a massive mess on your driveway. So just put it out, dump it right into the drain pan. We get these drain pans from Advanced Auto Parts. They're my favorite one because they hold 24 quarts. So once you are ready to install the new oil filter, you wanna make sure that off the vehicle, you're using new oil and just putting a little bit of oil on that ceiling ring, which is what's gonna help it glide right into position. And then you can go ahead and screw it on. Now, if you use an aftermarket oil filter, there's a chance that the filter is going to be a little bit larger than this factory one here. And that's going to cause a serious headache when it's time for reinstallation. Because you're super tight against this oil pan, and you want to make sure that you have as much as you want to make sure you have as much room as possible to get your fingers on the entire oil filter so that you can put it in there nice and tight. I know a lot of people will put on a KN filter or a big filter and they won't be able to snug it up all the way. Plug back in. Now I always put my drain plug back in 
all the way that I can by hand and then I snug it up. And I only go between, I would say 12 and 15 foot pounds of torque. Now this one has its own little rubber O-ring built into the drain plug. If you have a copper crush gasket, you can replace it at this time, but that's not this style drain plug that we're working with. So I'm just gonna go ahead, put my 15 millimeter wrench on there, or my socket with my 3 8 ratchet. I'm just gonna snug it up. It's a 10 or 15 foot pounds. A lot of people will over torque these things because they're afraid that they're gonna back out, but you gotta remember you've basically got an aluminum pan and a steel bolt and you do not want to have that strip out. So once everything's done, just go ahead and clean up some of that excess oil that gets trapped on that K member here, this little cross member. And once you have that done, you're able to rock and roll. Clean the exhaust off too. That'll burn off, no worries. Now we'll go fill it back up. Now this engine is a six liter LQ9 motor that came out uh, in this 2003 GMC Sierra but we have a low oil pressure warning light going on. We know that the oil pressure sensor is correct and that there's no filter screen block going on. What is happening is that this engine is old and it's in a dump truck, so it's been pretty injured over the years and it's time for replacement. But thanks to COVID, we can't get a replacement motor for about six weeks from Jasper. So what we're gonna do just to get this company rolling is we're gonna go ahead and put in 2050, which is going to be a way thicker oil than recommended but it's gonna allow the motor to continue to build pressure as this thing is old and tired. And the tolerances between the crank and the cam bearings is so great that now we have much lower oil pressure than we did when this thing first came out. So we'll go ahead and just fill this baby up with six quarts of oil and we'll check the oil level after that. So I'm just gonna move the uh, dipstick here just a little bit so you can kind of see the shine but we're just above this full line right here. Now, rule of thumb is that the point between here and the point between here is supposed to represent one quart of motor oil. So once you have enough engine oil in the truck, you're gonna go ahead and start it and immediately look at your oil filter to make sure that it's sealed correctly. I've had a couple of cases in the thousands of oil changes that I've done where the oil filter ring, that little O-ring at the very top, actually fails while you're installing it, and it shoots out like a zombie in a movie with a whole bunch of guts coming out. So I know that we put 10W40 in this truck, but we're trying to build oil pressure because this engine is on its last leg, and we're six weeks out from being able to get a new motor from Jasper, due to all the fun things of COVID. I'm Blair with Revit Auto. If you like this video, please smash that subscribe button. Every single view helps. And if you have any questions or videos that you wanna see, be sure to drop a comment below.